Okay, so when we take a look at this question, um, there's a couple of responses from students. And so these responses are asking, why is it necessary to balance uh, chemical equations? Uh, just a quick review for balancing chemical equations. We'll do a simple chemical equations. If you take um, zinc, maybe, metal, take some zinc, and we add that to some, let's say, hydro chloric acid, one of the things we see is bubbles are produced. And so we produce hydrogen gas and we produce zinc chloride. Now we can see that because we have two hydrogens over on the right hand side of the equation and only one on the left, this is not a balanced chemical equation. So we'll have to put our coefficients in. And so if we put a two in front of here, I now have two hydrogens on both sides, but now I have two chlorines in my reactants and only one chlorine in the product. So I'm going to also put a 2 in front of there. Um, and then because now I have 2 zinc, I'll have to put a 2 in front of this. And so there's a couple ways we can say this equation. We can say for every 2 moles of zinc and 2 moles of hydrochloric acid, I would produce 1 mole of hydrogen gas and 2 moles of zinc chloride. Or for every 2 uh, zinc atoms, and two molecules of hydrochloric acid, I would produce one molecule of hydrogen gas and two molecules of zinc chloride. So when we look at the students' responses, the first one, that the chemicals will not react until you have added the correct mole ratio, um, that's not correct because I could add this in a one to one uh, to one ratio, but I would not be able to produce um, one the hydrogen gas. I would end up with less hydrogen gas. So um, chemicals are going to react even with incorrect, say, ratios. Uh, we're just going to not use necessarily all the reactants or make all the products that we need to be. There will end up being a limiting reactant in this case. Uh, for number two, the correct products will not be formed unless the right amount of reactants have been added. Um, this statement is also wrong because the chemicals once again are going to they're going to make these same products they're going to it's going to make hydrogen gas and zinc chloride um, regardless whether the correct ratio of reactions are added or not so i could have a lot of zinc right maybe i have 10 moles of zinc but only two moles of hydrochloric acid well what would happen is i'd end up with a bunch of leftover zinc in that case um, answer c that a certain number of products cannot be formed without a certain number of reactants. Um, that is a correct statement. It's not my favorite, but um, it, it, because it's not complete. So to be able to add this, we have to look at the issue of the ratio between the reactants. So for example, if I want to make two moles of zinc chloride and I have plenty of hydrochloric acid, but maybe I have a certain amount of zinc, then I know that I have to make sure that I had at least two moles of zinc to that equation to make the two moles of zinc chloride. Uh, now question uh, D, the balanced equation, tells us how much reactant you need and allows us to predict how much product that you uh, will make. Um, I, I like this one also because the balanced chemical equation does give us once again those mole ratios and we can use that. Um, it doesn't necessarily tell us but we can use that to predict how much product I'll make. So for example, if I have two moles of zinc and two moles of hydrochloric acid, I will produce one mole of hydrogen and two moles of zinc chloride. Well, if I was to say um, maybe double this, and if I had maybe four moles of zinc and I had, say, four moles of hydrochloric acid, well, I could predict in this case that I would make two moles of hydrogen gas plus four moles of zinc chloride. And what's great about understanding balanced chemical equations is, and this is kind of the crux of chemistry for me, is that chemicals aren't cheap. And so if I need to make a certain amount of product, I don't want to waste chemicals. So the, this allows me to uh, figure out exactly what I need to make the amount of product that I want. And then finally, the mole to mole ratio must be established for the reaction, for the reaction to occur as written. Once again, the reaction will occur. Uh, we don't have to have the mole to mole ratio for it. Uh, the reaction to occur is written because something may be limited and what it's going to do is limit the products that you have there but the reaction once again will still recur um, we can use this ratio 
to be able to make predictions and calculations of how much product say I need um, or how much reactant I'd like to produce.